In a week that went from detective work to direct, we are now ready to dedicate our time to your comments. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force, Gabe from Switch Force. Not, not the other Gabe. We did have a little, little Gabe conundrum on Twitter this week that we'll discuss. But this is Comet Force 44, the show that is not about news, but instead about your thoughts, your theories, your ideas, your comments, your feedback, your concerns, and sometimes your crazy stories. Hi, Gabe. Hello, Zach. How are you? How was your how was your week especially since you had an identity crisis? Well, I'm constantly having an, an identity crisis of some kind, little known fact. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, pretty good week. Not a lot of games to play, but a lot of detective work going on. I can finally take my detective hat off now that the direct happened and people are generally positive with it. A lot of good stuff coming and hopefully some good comments coming. There indeed are my week. Thanks for asking. I was very cold. Was it? I, I I did wonder that just because we've had some strange weather here in Texas, uh, I, but I know it's always cold in Indiana around this time, so I, I didn't. My street is very slippery. I nearly fell. Like I almost fell last time I was there. I do I do not like a street when it when it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Texas well, boy, not used to walking on ice. <laughs> Gabe, we need to get you on an ice rink. I think you'd be a graceful skater. I might. Have you ever ice skated? I've never ice skated, but I used to be a really good rollerblader. Oh. It's a little different, but I think I think you could do it. If someone could do it, it would probably be you. I have, like, no doubt in my mind that I can successfully ice skate. I don't know if I can do, like, insane tricks or anything, but I'm not going to fall. <laughs> insane tricks and stuff. Rocket Power Reboot coming soon. Beautiful. Hasbin <laughs> Gabe is now auto, uh, and we are going to uh, woogity 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 straight to the first comment from Kevin Schuler. It's most certainly a mini direct. Zach's being too optimistic, and I am usually optimistic one regarding Nintendo. It is more than your average mini direct, though. Honestly, I think Nintendo exhausted a lot of their titles last year. This year's going to be slower, especially since they don't have to prove themselves now thanks to the Switch. Thoughts, Gabriel? I think they ma- this makes perfect sense. Although. I like the Direct, I think, more than other people did, because some of these ports that, you know, some other people might have played already are are new to me. You know, Hyrule Warriors, for all intents and purposes, new to me. Uh, Donkey Kong, I, I played a bunch of it, but I never finished it. Not quite new to me, but I, it's going to feel fresh, I think. I, I, I like it. Honestly, the world ends with me. Very exciting for me as well. I'm excited for tennis. <laughs> the world ends with you. A little, a little self-centered here, huh? <laughs> the world ends with you. Sorry. I, I was, there's a movie. I, I don't want to get into this because this is not the time. Um, but yes, uh, I, I like to direct more than most. And I'm surprised because I'm usually the pessimistic. And here I'm the one being optimistic about this. I'm excited. And... Yeah, I agree. It's going to be slower. I've been saying that it's going to be impossible to replicate last year, and I think we're seeing that come to fruition now. Well, while I think it is uh, impossible to replicate last year, given the just bombastic nature of their lineup, I do think that it's a little premature. Remember, it wasn't until Sony started getting a little uh, hot and bothered in Q1 that Q1 became anything notable. So I don't think that Nintendo taking a slower, uh, more port and third-party centric pace for the first couple months means anything about the second half. Remember, this is not indicative of what is going to be announced at E3, what is coming in September, October, November. I know we've heard from Emily Rogers that it is going to be a bit of a slower year, but I don't think that they are going to sit on their laurels just because the Switch has sold well. I think that's not true. I'm, and I was going to say, I feel like it's going to get stronger as the year continues, and, and games like Pikmin 4, games like Metroid Prime, games like Pokemon, games like Smash... Even if they don't come out, they will make an appearance, and this was, to me, I'm I'm surprised that people are saying, like, oh, it wasn't, you know, it's certainly a mini. Like, this is January 11th, uh, guys. January 11th, and this is what they put out. Uh, what I was going to say is I'm not so concerned about the latter half of year. Like, summer, I guess, is, is where I am wondering what's happening. Because last year we had some decent summer games from Nintendo, and this year we don't know too much. Of course, Kirby's coming. But... Other than that, I, I would love to see... Is, uh, honestly, a Smash port kind of fixes all of this for me. Like, give us a Smash port, and that will take pl- uh, the place of what uh, Mario Kart did last year. Of course, Odyssey, impossible to replicate, but they'll have something for, for Holiday. And uh, Breath of the Wild, you know, anomaly. There's no way that something of that scale will be ready quite yet. Um, but, right. yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be a good year, but it's definitely going to be slower. 
I will. We shall see. I will move us along, though, Zach. We will see. Yeah, what... don't don't be too slow yourself, Gabe. Travis Foster says, "I'm actually really excited about this. I love the idea to get more casual multiplayer games to get my wife more interested." And this is in reference to Mario Tennis Aces. Zach, what do you think? The thing that I take from this, and and what kind of made me uh, get all quizzical, I I really like the idea that Nintendo is bringing more local multiplayer. That is the you know the way I would describe it, and the part that I would draw enthusiasm from. I don't have a wife, uh, so Travis, you are a step ahead of me. Um, but I do wonder if this casual idea is going to become more prevalent in 2018. You know, we saw that once. I mean, I guess initially, but with the Wii being so popular. There was a casual approach uh, that was quite prevalent, and the Switch started off hardcore, Zelda incredibly hardcore, um, and I feel like now, you know, Mario Tennis Ace is a, is a little bit of a more simplistic Mario sports title. They're bringing an easy mode to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Do we think that as the install base grows, the casualness of the console increases? I think part of what makes Switch successful is that it is a core console. Like, mm-hmm. hardcore gamers love it. So maybe that stops Nintendo from going a little bit too casual. But honestly, I don't see a whole lot wrong with some casual stuff on here. I feel like things like Mario Tennis need to exist for the younger people. So I'm, I'm not one of the people that don't want these things around at all. Of course, it is a thin line when you just... You don't want to get to the level of the Wii where there was only family-friendly shovelware on there. Of course, I don't think that happens. And I do think this is a new and improved Nintendo uh, with a new leadership, and I, I doubt that they make the same mistakes. And, you know, it's hard to call them mistakes because the Wii was so successful. But, you know, the transition into Wii U and then obviously what happened with that, not so great. So I, I, I hope they don't repeat that. Agreed. Kev Sand says, Why are people being so cautiously naive? It's so obvious there's a big direct on the horizon. You seriously think this is their direct for the first half of 2018 with a bunch of old ports and Mario Tennis? LOL, I know it's not confirmed, but come on, the evidence is all there. And I... I wonder. Because I... Personally, again, first half, I feel like they... They've slotted in quite a bit. I mean, have they, though? Like, well, okay, like, like, let's go through, right? So January is going to be an, an indie month, right? Sure. I mean, what, what, Fe- what's, February what, what's, is going to be Bayonetta. Wait, what's the big indie month? Uh, like, what, what makes January an indie month? What's happening? There's no, there's no physical releases, so it has to be an indie month. Yeah, but we, there's no big indies either. No, not big, but you know, Meat Boy, Darkest Dungeon, Celeste. Okay, it's uh, an indie month. Okay, February right? we have Bayonetta. Right. Um, March. And April, I would assume, are going to be... Uh, March is obviously Kirby, and then I would assume that either Hyrule Warriors is late later that month or in April, because May is DK and Dark Souls. I don't know where else you're going to slot something big. I mean, I mean but, maybe uh, you get uh, another uh, Nintendo game in... I mean, Mar- Mar- wait, Mario Tennis is also spring, so Mario Tennis is going to be probably May. So that gives you a Nintendo game for February, March, April, May. I don't I don't see them slotting anything else in before E3. I mean, it'd be great to get more than one Nintendo game a month. Right? Like, I but, mean, th- there's no, but, like, but, but, okay, but, that there, like, No, but, one. but think about, outside of the holiday rush, one game a month last year was, like, a big deal. And, and now... I mean, previously, you've said that you don't even know if they can maintain that. So I'm I'm personally... Surprised that people are expecting so much more. Well, it, it's the expectation from from last year, right? And it's so hard to compete with. But what I think it is more is is possibly like okay, Zelda, Mario, Mario Kart. There's nothing of that caliber here. But I, I don't think that is like the first half of last year was a launch window, and that probably drove that you know caliber of lineup. I think that this. Look, if I told you, hey, the first five months of, of Nintendo of, of twenty eighteen for Nintendo from them are going to include Bayonetta one and two collection, a new Mario Tennis game, an, a Donkey Kong port, a Zelda Hyrule Warriors complete collection, a new Kirby game, you'd be like, okay, that sounds like a pretty good first five months, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's bad. At all. And we know that there's gonna be other third party games. I mean, we don't know exactly when, but I'm sure something like Wolfenstein Two will help fill. You know, one of these months there'll be something else. Dark Souls is coming. Uh, a whole lot more indies, obviously, in the first five months. You got classics like Payday Two, Gabe. 
Classic. Um, okay, but let's answer his question here. Do we think that another direct is coming soonish? Let, let let's say uh, before the end of February. Do we think we get another direct? I I personally say no. I think we get an indie, like an indie's direct, right? Because so much of the indies that were shown before are out. You know, there's a handful that aren't. You know, Pocket Rumble, War Groove, things like that, Flipping Death. Mm-hmm. But everything else is out. So maybe tell us what else is coming. Maybe some more uh, indie exclusives. Of course, we're still getting DLC for some of the things like uh, Stardew Valley. That's going to get the multiplayer um, uh, DLC uh, on Switch. Well, and that's the other thing. We also have DLC, right? So Splatoon 2 is going to continue updating. Pokemon Tournament got surprise DLC. Mario Odyssey got surprise update. You have the Mario Plus Rabbids DLC. We know that Zelda is done, but many of the games from last year are still being updated to continue the content cycle. Honestly, like... This is just conjecture, but I personally believe, if I had to put money on I think the fact that they did not address the overarching Switch issues slash needs, online, virtual console, interface, apps, I think that is what has created a where the heck is the next Direct, more so than games. Although I, I do think games have something to do with it for a very small section of people, but they're very vocal. Like, the hardcore mm-hmm. Nintendo fans that, you know, played everything on Wii U, like, this isn't a lot of new stuff to them because they played through, you know, Donkey Kong. They've played Hyrule Wars. Like, f- so for them, that that does nothing. Mm-hmm. So I can see how, like, fans uh, of Nintendo that are so hardcore that they were a lot into the Wii U as a platform, they're let down. And I understand that. Like, there's no, like, new game. Like, the newest thing is Mario Tennis, and, of course, that is something more casual. So I, I-, I understand. But... Yeah, I mean, we we could talk about this at nausea and and probably not make it anywhere. I I don't know. I think we at least get an indies, hopefully, right? I mean, there's still so many. Flipping Death, Hollow Knight, uh, Dandara, uh, War Groove, Pocket Rumble. There's so much that is still coming. I feel like. Well, I hope some of that stuff is out. But uh, well, I'm I'm sure it will be. But I don't know that we could get a presentation about that. You got, you're gonna re you were gonna recycle trailers just to get no dates? like new trailers no like Tantara's out like next month like we have we have a date like Hollow Knight is probably coming soon uh nah. you know Pocket Rumble at, you, let's just whatever that that game's coming at some point I guess but other than that like what is there War Groove Flipping Death the Flipping Death you played and you know that game's coming so I feel like when all, a bunch of these games are out hypothetically so within so but the but, next but couple think months, about Think about it, though, from, like, a, a Nintendo standpoint. So they're going to have a Nindies Direct to announce these games. And I, cause I'm not talking about, like, oh, are we going to get more Indies or whatever. I'm sp- We're specifically commenting on, is there a Direct? So you think that s- systematically, formulaically, they want to have a Nindies Direct to announce and then a Nindies Direct to date them? Like, or to, like, that just seems, no. like, overkill to me. No, I mean, we did have two Nindies Directs last year. But, but but they weren't the same games. No, I'm not talking about the same games. I'm talking about an indie's presentation with brand new indies where none of these games that we're talking about get mentioned. Because, again, hypothetically, these things are out by then. Right? I, I, full, I fully think that a good portion of these things are out by the end of February. Slash March. Mm-hmm. So then that's when the new did. Like, indies are doing phenomenal on Switch. Like, even, like, when was it today, yesterday, the, the Super Me Boy tweet where they mm-hmm. said that you know, the day one sales on uh, eShop almost came extremely close to being the same as the day one sales on other platforms. Like, that that's crazy for Super Meat Boy, a game that has been out for a very long time. And you can get for, like, 2 or $3 or, uh, in some cases for, like, Steam um, sales events. Like, everybody already has Super Meat Boy. But it still did so well. And we've, right. se- we've seen that uh, echoed with Rocket League doing really well, Stardew Valley doing really well, Golf Story doing – like, Indies have found a home on Switch. And I feel like Nintendo would be foolish to ignore that. So why well, not? They, they're not ignoring it, but I don't think that you need a. But if you had a, an Indies presentation last year and that turned out super well, why don't you just do it again? Because like you're also forgetting like Kentucky Route Zero, uh, Super Meat Boy Forever, Shovel Knight King of Cards. We've got like Morphe's Law, Sasha Sports Club. Like f- we've got a bunch of things. That still need to release light fingers. Like there's a ton of games. Wait, so you don't think we get an indies presentation before like half the year's over? No, I I would say okay, maybe like May, April, May. No, I mean, but then you're getting dangerously close to like E3 season. 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Indies aren't going to get a, a rep, major representation at E3. Okay, regardless, we are talking about this for way too Move long. Move us along, Gabriel. The Little Nick says, I have a ridiculous theory. A while before Odyssey launched, a map of the Odyssey world was shown in Japan. At the bottom of the map uh, was what looked exactly like Isle Delfino. Now in a direct mini, a sunshine costume was announced. Could Isle Delfino be coming as DLC? I thought this was really good. Uh, good remembering work here because that is true. There is definitely that little Isle Delfino uh, portion of the Mario map. It never really panned out to be anything, as far as I'm aware. If it did in the game, please correct us. But as far as I'm aware, that's not a part of the game. Um, so they have never said whether there will or won't be Mario DLC. They definitely did not call um, Balloon Find a, a DLC update. They just called it an update. That could mean one of two things. Either they're calling it an update because there is DLC and they want to charge for it, or they're calling an update because they want to make clear that there isn't going to be DLC for the game. Yeah, make no mistake. If there if there is a, a new world, it will not be free. Right? Absolutely. 100%. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, maybe. Good theory. Uh, good detective work. Uh, you know, a lot of sleuths out here. Uh, this I week. like it a lot. Yeah. And Little Nick, you know, we choose you over Big Nick every time, so <laughs> we love you. G-Man says, everyone wants a Waluigi game, and you know what would be perfect for it? Luigi's Mansion. Imagine a game that could be played in both co-op or single player, where Luigi and Waluigi work together to clear a mansion, but they're in mirrored dimensions. Working with the environment in one world could affect the other dimension. This would open up the opportunity for each character to have separate abilities that the other character could use to clear an obstacle, defeat an enemy, etc. In the other character's dimension, you could either be saving Mario and Wario, or Daisy and a new character, Wa Daisy. There could also be a reference to Wario and Princess Beach setting up a new Wario game. So, Luigi's Mansion is something we've always wanted for Switch, but I love this idea of, like, a... You either could play at co-op, or you could, like, alternate the characters, and Waluigi gets to go and, and do some ghost hunting. Wa Daisy is what stands out here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to just envision what that character looks like. Um, yeah. Especially now, like, seeing the hair of uh, Waluigi and uh, Wario. Like, with the Mario Tennis trailer, like, we saw their hair. That kind mm-hmm. of comes kind of weird. Um, so, I don't know what Wad Daisy's going to look like. That's the only thing I can think about now. Um, but, yeah, a, a Luigi's Mansion style game at all on Switch would be cool. Yeah, I I just, I really like this idea. Really, do I come across an idea that I like as much as my own. Uh, and, G-Man, you have done it. So, if I could send you, like, some freaking pixie dust, I would, I'm sending it to you. I'm going to give you some some ESP kisses. Fantastic. Wub, uh, Wubzod says, Kirby isn't number one, unsubscribed. Kidding. But seriously, how can you not love Kirby more than literally anything else in your life? I don't get it. I don't get I don't get how you can love Kirby's. <laughs> I, I am over and over again shocked by the Kirby love. And, and I, I try to tell him, guys, I'm on your side, people. I, I'm, a, I'm a man of the people. I keep telling Zach that Kirby is exciting for a lot of people. Uh, people are hyped and excited and Zach doesn't understand why, but I'm excited for Kirby as well. So I'm all aboard the 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 friend train. Or is that what they called it on, in the trailer, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I'm excited to try out the multiplayer. I just, to me, Kirby is the most ho hum boring of all the Nintendo, the major Nintendo franchises. I feel like it is the most simplistic, repetitive, and I'm still gonna play it. So you know, I I, I like Kirby. I I do not share what Zach is saying, guys. Don't kill me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad that people are super pumped. I hope that the game delivers. Look, if it comes out and is an 8.5 out of 10 game, great. I will play the heck out of it. And maybe it can turn me around on, on Kirby. But I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised that like this is the thing that people are pumped for. But maybe it's a nostalgic thing. I don't know. I don't know. Preston Smith doesn't know either. Uh, he says, did anyone else find this direct to be a little too hyped up? It's like this was a... Uh, proceeding of what's to come. I'm going to go on a little rant here, so be prepared, Gabe. I don't think that this is bad because of a lack of Pokemon or Metroid, but because there's no big games. It feels as if they are loading ports, which are at least good games, and easy stuff to make like Mario Tennis so they can have as big of a year as last year. I would rather just have some high-quality big games than have Mario Tennis, and this is just my opinion, but they failed this time in my mind. A lack of big info on already known games they're releasing, more getting shoveled in so they can have a big first-party year again. The most exciting this whole thing, the most exciting thing this whole time was the Kirby release date. Not that I won't get some of the others, but I'm not touching tennis unless it's under $30. You're not touching tennis then. Let's make that clear. 
Yeah. <laughs> that game will not be under thirty dollars. It will not be under fifty nine ninety nine. Like that's a, that's going to be a full price game. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you know, I was surprised to see a lot of people say that the direct sucked. That there were a lot of people that directly did not like the direct. And his complaint that stop pushing out games and instead give us fewer big games is one that I think is a valid complaint and one that I wanted to know if you would prefer, Gabe, if you could pick fewer big games, like let's say there was going to be two, a February game and a May game. Would you take that over having a game a month? I mean, obviously, right? If this like dream scenario were feasible in any way, but the thing to understand is these ports are way easier to make than new games. And Mm -hmm. they're, for the most part, done by B and C tier teams. Not not as far as quality goes. I'm just saying that they're not the teams that are working on the next Metroid or Pokemon. So, I mean, it, those things aren't ready regardless. Like, even, even if these ports don't exist, that doesn't mean that Metroid is ready any sooner. I guess sure. that's Yeah, my, that's, that's absolutely, my, that's that's absolutely my true. Point. Yeah. But what, what's your preference if... if and, and maybe not maybe Metroid and Pokemon are too large, but let's say you could get <laughs> instead of all of this, right? Let's say you could get Bayonetta three in a new Donkey Kong. Well, yeah, of course I'm going to take new games. You or, would, you would yeah, take those. Yeah, I, I, that, that's silly. I'm I'm always going to take new games because I can go play the old games right now. Right, like, I, but, but so you would take two over like six. I would take two new games over six games already available, yes, because, again... But all six are not. I mean, Mario Tennis is brand new. Yeah. I mean, that's the only, right. that's the only thing that's brand new, right? Yeah, I, I, I do think, you know, and it's a, it's a very large topic conversation, I do think that this port porting issue is going to become more and more of a dividing discussion. I really do. <laughs> I think a- I think when it's Mario Kart 8, it's no big deal. It's the opening month. It's the you know the best multiplayer game. But I think when it's Hyrule Warriors and when it's Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and when it's eventually inevitably, you know... You know, see, like, Mario Maker will be interesting. When they inevitably announce Mario Maker for Switch, the reception of that is going to really, I think, be fascinating. Because if it's Smash, people are all over it. If it's Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and even Mario Tennis, which is not a port, people are like, meh. Mario Maker to me will be interesting because that is going to, I think, see if the camel's back has been broken or not. Because Mario Maker is a game that has a lot of love, but not as much as like Smash or Pokemon. If people are like, ugh, another port, or if people get excited, that's going to say a lot. It's a, it's a tricky situation. Wii U didn't perform well, right? So there's a mm-hmm. large segment of the audience that hasn't played these games, and I understand some of you might have. But... To that I say, hey, if you played the game, pretend it doesn't exist. I don't think that Hyrule Warriors getting ported over stops any other game from being developed. I really don't. I think that's being made by some people that were not leads in any other... Like, it's made by other developers. Like, these games do not stop your favorite games from still existing. So, I would suggest just pretend these don't exist. Mm -hmm. And and, and the other games are still... to me, that's the strangest thing about all of this. The people that are so angry at, at Donkey Kong and, and Hyrule Warriors. Like, oh, like, you know, we already played those. It's like, cool, then don't don't play them. Like, other games are coming. Like, there's a lot to play on Switch. We have a lot of great indies still coming. Uh, you know, if tennis isn't your thing, there will be mm-hmm. other games as well. I, I'm sure, uh, you know, Kirby's brand new. Yoshi's going to be brand new. And hypothetically, uh, there's going to be more first-party things as well. Yeah, like, I, I just, I can't understand the thinking of just getting mad at the ports. Because I get it, I get it, it's not it's not cool. But it's also not a problem that's unique to Switch. Other platforms do this as well. Right, we're getting Shadow of the Colossus remastered, you know, relatively soon. And we had, sure. we had Crash Bandicoot remastered last year, and that sold really, really well. So, while people like to complain on the internet, go look at the sales for, for Crash Bandicoot remastered. That is one of the best-selling games of last year. Yeah. And, like... People want these things. Maybe, maybe you don't, but there's a section of people that are buying these things, and that's what. Because, like, frankly, if people didn't want these, companies wouldn't keep making them, and that's just the truth. Yeah, I mean, and also, I, again, I want to think backwards, right? Because okay, we launched with Zelda Breath of the Wild, we launched with Mario Kart Eight, we launched with, or well, we don't launch in the launch window, 
And we have also one two switch, which by all accounts has been forgotten very quickly by majority of the, the, the audience. So in March, you got Zelda. In April, you get Mario Kart, but it's at the very end of April, the last couple of days. So it's, it's really basically May. And then you don't get another Nintendo developed game until ARMS on June 16th. And that is the launch year. So to get Kirby and Mario Tennis as the new titles for the first five months, and to get Hyrule Warriors and Donkey Kong and Bayonetta as the ports, technically that is a more filled year from Nintendo than the launch year. Yeah. I mean, and we're not going to make people budge on on the port opinion. It, it Like you said, it's going to become a, a point of contention going forward. People are going to get more and more angered by it the more these games get released. But... I I wonder if some of these people complaining about it now were not the same people that in the beginning of the Switch's uh, first year were saying things like, hey, I want Captain Toad to be ported. Uh, I want Wonderful 101 to be ported because we've seen that an awful lot as well. Mm -hmm. So now people are kind of getting what they wanted, which is like, you know, games that didn't do as well on Switch making their way over to uh, on Wii U, excuse me, so making their way over to Switch. This is what people said they wanted. And now it's happening. Now people are complaining. So I, I feel like it's impossible to please everyone. And my advice is just like, hey, if you don't like the game, if you don't buy it, it doesn't exist. Just ignore it. it mm -hmm. I really, really, really do not think that these games are taking any development, like power, finances, whatever you want to look at it uh, from any other games. The games are still being made and they're just not ready yet. Good deal. But with that, we can move on to James Wetling, who says, come on, guys, this was a really poor announcement, even for a direct, uh, mini direct, excuse me, uh, Nintendo need to power straight into the 2018 hype and not this sort of weak lineup. And then we have a couple of replies here, one from Dragon Band. He says, Donkey Kong, Hyrule Warriors, Bayonetta 1 and 2, Dark Souls, Kirby, Yoshi, Fire Emblem, Mario Tennis, Payday 2. That would be Faye, but... Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, I'm trained to think Fire Emblem when I see FE at this point. <laughs> Payday to an extra content for Mario, Pokin, and Rabbits. This is only the first half of the year. All of these, or at least uh, almost all, are releasing before or just after E3. E3 will most likely cover the second half, so not exactly. And then uh, a bad year. Yeah. So yes, because we didn't put the read more. Uh, James comes back and says no s uh, no OS update, no new AAA announcement to get hyped over. Just add-ons and ports. The biggest hype is over Dark Souls and Payday 2. Both oh, wait, what? <laughs> Both old games. I didn't buy the Switch for this Payday 2 hype. Where's that at? <laughs> Again, this is sort of my theory that the the OS update or some of that stuff kind of killed the hype. Technically, there's a lot of AAA here. We're getting Dark Souls Remastered the same day and date. And technically, whether you want to agree with it or not, like Mario Tennis and Donkey Kong and Bayonetta are, and Kirby are, are, they're not AAA like Megatons, but they're big franchises from one of the biggest game makers in the world. Okay, the the first thing I think about with this is, why are people expecting an OS update? Has that happened? Like, ever? The 5.0. I'm sure it's the 5.0 leak. I'm sure that just, you know. Yeah, but the Wii U OS was the Wii U OS. I mean, and that never changed. I don't think they're expecting a refresh. I think they're expecting a 5.0 update that brings themes or brings YouTube or brings things like that. Oh, okay. Th then at that point, yes. I, I Not do think a brand that. new, like, mm -hmm. hey, the, the Switch is going to... Yeah, like I don't think that's what anyone's see, saying. See, because now I'm thinking that people are expecting like what Xbox no, does, no, 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 like no, where no. they like change the dashboard type thing. No, I don't think so. That's not happening. So, but yeah, introduction of, of media applications and, and other features for for the OS Themes, yeah, yeah that yeah that'll happen. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean it's not time. They're gonna talk about online at some point. So, what better time to talk about you know 5.0 than with the online thing that might have gotten pushed back? Who knows at this point. I just want to know when we had freaking first couple months that had tons of games. Again, besides the, the, the years where we get Bloodborne or a Horizon Zero Dawn, basically Sony, Microsoft doesn't do much lately, exclusive-wise. And th even third-party-wise, there's not a whole... I mean, so there are, to no, me, no, this wait, is not wait, a Nintendo wait. problem. It's an industry problem. No. Th third-party has been strong in the last couple what is, of years. What is coming in the next couple months that you're super pumped for third-party-wise? Well, I mean... 
again, not this year, but yeah, you know, exactly. Mo- Monster I'm Hunter, saying- Monster Hunter. But in, in previous years, we uh. had Tomb Raider be a, a early game, right? And there's rumors that God of War is an early game. The, you know, the March right rumors. Sony. Okay, but you know, Far Cry. Um, what, what was it? Prime War? Was it four? One of those was was early. And we are getting five. It did get delayed and pushed. And we're getting like stuff like Nino Kuni two. I just. I'm shocked to see that like Nintendo putting out a game a month from from their own house is is not enough. I think it's just not enough for people because it's ports. I think that's that's all it comes down to. But I mean, again, we can belabor this point forever. I don't I don't think that we're gonna reach any consensus conclusion with this. Some people are gonna be upset about it. Some people aren't. I I, yeah. I, I say just figure out a way to be content. I love the Switch, <laughs> and I have no problems with any of this. Taylor's Coloring Crew, which is the gang I want to join, <laughs> says the Direct was mega. No, it was not. It was technically six announcements, four that we already knew, a Mario Tennis, Ugg, and Dark Souls. Overall, if this happens again, Nintendo needs to step it up. And the only thing I want to pull out here, because we discussed this to death, is I'm, I'm, I get it. I get the, the reason for the Mario Tennis hate. I'm not sure why Nintendo still felt the need to make that game. I mean, it could be fun, but... I don't know that anyone was excited for Mario Tennis. Like, they have so many of their sports. Baseball. Strikers, please. I don't know why Mario Tennis is the pick. To me, this, like, shows that fans are so fickle. And I'm not talking about Taylor's coloring crew. I I mean, obviously, I don't know you. So, this isn't me talking about you. Just the consensus. Like, people love Nintendo one day and then just, like, a Direct that is still good. But it's just not. And, you know, I I warn people of this. Like I said last year. Hey, next year is going to be impossible to keep up with this pace. And you can see people kind of like turn on Nintendo like very quickly. And it, it, it's always a what are you done for me lately thing. And they forget. I just I just want to make the argument that they are keeping up the pace. I don't see how they're not keeping up the pace. Yeah, but not in the way they want. Obviously, people are complaining. They, are, they have increased the pace, Gabe. Well, I agree with you, Zach, but obviously <laughs> okay. not everyone else does. No, well, you just said that they are not keeping up the pace, and you said that you you previously said that oh they're not well, going to be able to keep it. They, oh, and no, they... no, 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 no. Uh, but what I mean by that, and I, I my, my bad, I, I felt that this was just common sense. So I'll explain myself a little bit. What I mean by they can't keep up the pace of last year, it's I'm not talking number of games. Okay, so pace is not the word. So yeah, okay, all right, change uh, that out and say that you don't that they can't keep up the caliber of the year. Sure. Sure, because it's impossible. I feel like Breath of the Wild, yeah. obviously, same year. Yeah, expectations are somewhere where they shouldn't be, and I feel like this happens a lot in in in, in the industry where like a company does so so well, and then expectations get catapulted into astronomical levels, and then the come down has to happen. And, and then I will say that the, the strength of the Switch, at least for me personally, and all I can speak on is my experience as a player, is. Th- the in-between stuff. Like, I had so much fun with ARMS, and I had so much fun with the plethora of indies, and I had so much fun even with some of the redos like Overcooked. And I, I think that because of the, the multiple ways you can play, because of the extreme focus on local, I would argue that the Switch succeeds just as much from Zelda and Mario, at least for the hardcore, right? Just as much from Zelda and Mario as the other stuff, as the in-betweens. And so a first half that has numbers but not necessarily the notoriety like that's still really exciting and really cool yeah i'm i'm I'm, you know we got to stop talking about it but i'm happy with uh what's coming for the first half of the year uh, at least what we know Uh, bayonet is a big standout for me um and i'm sorry that not everybody feels that way i guess but i'm gonna move on to it's con who says please Bad idea! No way the Mario voice actor is going to say a whole movie-length script. He just says, oh, and ah! But I didn't use a Mario voice, obviously. But <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to be very expressive because he wrote this in all caps. Thank you. You're welcome. I like this a lot. I'm so pumped for the movie. <laughs> I, I thought about this a lot. The other day I was like, is Mario going to talk for an hour and a half? Like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of Mario talking. Dude, Mario's going to have a voice. Yes, Mario will have a voice. That's not that crazy. I know he's going to have a voice. I just mean, like, what's it going to sound like? Who's it going to be? It's not going to be Charles Martinet. No, let's no, be, no. Let's be honest No, I, I, I don't think so. But that's how it's going to happen. There's going to be a Com- different actor. Comment of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Uh, Weckham says, unrelated topic, but am I the only one hoping for either a 4DS or Switch Mini? My 3DS used to be, and still is, the machine that was always in my pocket. I mean, even the 3DS XL is like an iPhone, while the Switch is like a long iPad Mini with Joy-Cons attached. Nowadays, I only use my Switch docked or when I travel with a bag, but I still use my 3DS more due to the fact that I can play it on the bus, in school, without having to always have a backpack with me. And I thought about this, Gabe, and I want to ask, and just, I guess, talk in general about, you know, is the Switch too big to be portable? After having it for a year. I don't think so, no. I, I, I've i proven to you that it fits in my pockets. And, I mean, and I don't wear, like, huge pants or anything. Like, I mean, you you know me. You know how I dress. I, I wear, mm-hmm. you know, proper attire. I, <laughs> <laughs> you got proper pockets? Yeah, like, I, I'm not wearing, like, oversized pants or anything like that. I, I, I wear similar stuff to what you wear. And it fits in my pocket. So, I mean, I, I'm obviously not carrying it around with me. But mm-hmm. I feel like I'm the wrong person to ask this because I don't, I don't take it with me to a whole lot of places. And when I do, it's it's the airport or you know uh, this sounds silly, but when I go to like to the to the park, uh, I don't go to play Switch, but I'm waiting for something, and the Switch will be in my car with me or something. But I'll have it on in a case. Um, I can imagine taking it to like university, college, whatever you want to say. It'll be in your backpack. Um. Please, no 4DS. I, I guess that's my only sentiment here before I just keep rambling. No 4DS. Just Switch. One ecosystem. If you want a, a Switch Mini, sure, I'm all for that. But no, let's let's unify this 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 thing. Unification. We love it. I, I do think that one of the reasons that the 3DS is continuing for another full year is, though, because of the fact that um, it is smaller and there still isn't a 100% buy-in on the Switch is a portable. So. Yeah. We will yeah. move on to Flipdoo, who says, there has to be. <laughs> okay. There has to be. Uh, there were no big first-party titles, nothing on the online system or the 5.0 update. There is just so much stuff that wasn't there that should have been. And I guess he's talking about the fact that maybe another Direct could be coming. We have a li- little bit of, of, of a hint just because... In every other Direct Mini that there has been, a full-on, full-length Direct has happened within 20 days. And I think that's what he's talking about here. We mentioned that in a video. Um, yeah, I, I do think another Direct happens sooner rather than later. I don't think we're waiting like two or three months before another one. And maybe the next Direct is, hey, this is what the online is going to be. This is when it's going to happen. And this is a 5.0 update. Like, do you think? I that- think that is far more likely than this oh, more AAA games thing. I think a Direct that focuses on the upcoming online service and that focuses on maybe some new touches to the UI or, you know, the system, I guess, that to me is plausible. This idea that there's, like, games, games, games galore, to me is not. But but if you're going to if you're gonna tell me that there's a, hey, there's a Direct coming that includes um, more hardware-level updates and discussion, then I buy into that far, far more easily. Sure. And I do wonder if that one random rumor that the Switch Online is delayed till fall is actually legit. It might be. So we'll find out. In the meantime, though, Harry Williams says, Dude, I will tell you what Mario Tennis Aces made me really want. Switch Sports! Pretty much just a copy of Wii Sports, but for the Switch. I really want to play that again, exactly how it used to be. But I sold my Wii a while back. And and I'm surprised that there hasn't been something like this yet. I know 1-2-Switch kind of was the stand-in for that. But I do think a more sporty version would do real well on the Switch, especially given that local multiplayer focus that we always come back to. Switch Sports Resort. Um, yeah, I mean, those were those were fun games for what they were. And, you know, they're perfect for a party atmosphere, which the Switch lends itself to quite well. I, mm-hmm. I, would, I wouldn't mind it. I don't think it happens, though. Ever? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it happens anytime soon. Really? I mean, it depends on how long the... the I mean, was there anything equivalent on Wii U? Uh, Nintendo Land, I guess, right? It's like the closest thing, even though that wasn't sports. Right. Yeah, Nintendo Land would have been the equivalent. I'm just... I think it's something that they could bring back and would do really well as... Look, give us this freaking Switch Sports and then we don't have to casualify all the other games. <laughs> yeah, or just give us Strikers. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Give me that strikers. All yeah. right, that's it for comments this week. It's a pretty good show. We're back to that uh, 
podcast length for you. 40 minutes this week. Woo! A lot, we, of, a lot we, of good discussion. We, we, we saw some people uh, have an uh, issue with the, shorts be, the shows being a little bit shorter. Uh, hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun show. A lot of interesting debate. Let us know you're taking the comments down below and keep those thoughts, theories, ideas, weird stories, and wumba coming. Now that this is 2018, though, we cannot forget Gabe's advice column, and that is how we will close out episode 44. Wait, do you have one? Because I kind of thought you weren't going to do it, so I didn't think of one, so I need a second. Oh, Gabe. My advice is always have your advice prepared. (laughs) Always be prepared. No. My advice is um, to do projects immediately and do not just procrastinate procrastinate i I learned this lesson today actually i have been procrastinating cleaning my office for months guys i I have been on him about this can we talk about that (laughs) sure let's have a freaking comment for us it's all about my my cleanliness can we can we talk about how i've literally been telling you for about two weeks now every single day to clean your office for reasons And you refuse. Not that you... You don't just refuse. You put it off like it's going to magically happen on its own. And guys, let me tell you. His office is not only dirty. It is... Wait, am I allowed to post a picture you sent me today? Can I do that? Sure. I'm going to post a picture here of what Zach's office looks like. It is uh, what I envision... uh, What's the name of that game, Zach, where, like, don't touch the floor? You know, like yeah, like lava but, or whatever. Yeah, you know? don't touch the floor because it's lava. Zach took that to heart and uh, put cardboard <laughs> boxes all over the floor so he could stand on those. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have my advice. All right, good. Go. My advice is don't let your expectations ruin something that is otherwise good. Right? Sometimes oh, so, we ex- so, so on point. Sometimes we expect a little too much, right? And, and I get it. We all get hyped for a number of things. But... That just leads to us being let down. So keep your expectations in check, and then maybe you will live a happier, more satisfactory life when you aren't constantly let down by things that weren't going to ever be what you thought they were going to be in your head. Yes, good, glorious, great. The three G's of love and hate. Thank you for being a part of our wonderful community. We love you. We're glad to have you. And we will get back to you next week with that episode 45. In the meantime, have a fantastic week, everybody. Thanks for always being a part of the action. We love you. We love you. We love you. Mwah. And until next week, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out. <laughs>